tonight, the Mid-North gearing up to be home to a billion dollars worth of renewable energy projects. And history made as the Tunarama Ambassador winner is crowned in Port Lincoln. From our seven Spencer Gold Studios, your nightly news with Louise Hedger begins now. Good evening. The state's insatiable appetite for green energy has sparked a renewable boom across the Mid-North and York Peninsula. Recent efforts to bolster South Australia's energy security has led to a market explosion, offering hundreds of jobs and more than a billion dollars worth of investments. South Australia is on track of meeting its target of 75% clean energy by 2025. And the state's hunger for renewables is making the York and Mid-North regions look unseasonably green. We're starting to see a lot more higher rates of renewable penetration, not just in South Australia, but right across the national electricity market on the East Coast. The previous state government's emissions targets opened the floodgates to a multi-billion dollar market, with projects bringing hundreds of new jobs to the region. More than a billion is being spent on solar farms in the Mid-North alone, with the Robertstown 500 megawatt project expected to create 350 new jobs. The $65 million solar farm outside of Port Piri is also well underway, which is employing around 200 workers during its installation. It's also bolstering SA's energy security. Following the 2016 blackouts, the state has been shifting towards diversifying the grid through more localised storage facilities. Darimple's new $30 million battery has come online with YP residents reaping the benefits. The battery can provide backup power to approximately 4,500 customers in the Dalrymple service area for around two to three hours on average. It is actually pretty a pretty serious backup on, on the end of the network in that particular area. Dominic Beaton, 7, Spencer Golf News. A 29-year-old man has been arrested in Port Augusta after he allegedly tried to swim to evade police following a late-night robbery. Authorities were called to Tassie Street Tavern at 11.30 last night after reports a man had stolen two cartons of beer from the premises. The suspect was quickly tracked down and dropped his beers as officers gave chase. He fled into the water to escape police, but after negotiations made his way back to land, where he was arrested and charged with a number of offences, including theft and serious criminal trespass. The Port Lincoln State Emergency Service was kept busy with two sea rescues over the Australia Day long weekend. Volunteers first responded to a May Day call off Thistle Island late Saturday afternoon where a charter boat had hit a reef. The rescue shark cat was already on the water at the Tunarama Festival and was able to assist along with a number of private vessels. A fishing charter also required assistance at sea just off the Coffin Bay National Park on Monday afternoon. A mining company with a developing project near Broken Hill is excited for what 2019 will bring. Carpentaria Resources says it's pushing for further funding to go towards a feasibility study for the Horsens Iron Project. Eyes on the prize. One month into 2019 and Carpentaria has mapped out what it wants to achieve now and into 2020. Our immediate goal is to secure that feasibility funding and I'm not going to put a time on that. However, once we get that funding, uh, we think only 12 to 15 months to complete the feasibility study. The Horse and Iron Project has a unique selling point to investors. It's super grade iron ore. At 70%, it's the world's highest grade product. With a push for higher productivity and less pollution, particularly in Asia, Carpentaria says interest is high. One company has already invested in the study, but more is needed. Mitsui have committed to 20% of that funding and that's 5 point four million dollars which rounds the whole funding out to 27 million dollars for our feasibility study now that's around 10 to 12 million dollars in drilling and then the rest on engineering and environmental studies the horsens project is 60 k's from broken hill providing access to vital infrastructure mr hill says working closely with the silver city and creating jobs would be very rewarding secure that funding we're doing everything in our power to do that we think the market conditions uh, are still very good uh, in fact they're improving and we're confident that we'll get that funding and move the project forward patrick reinke seven spencer gulf news 
Meanwhile, the first product from the Carapatina copper mine could be ready for production as early as this year. Owner Oz Minerals says construction is in full swing as the site prepares to go online. John Hunt has the details. It's the next big thing in South Australian industry, with promises of jobs and valuable export dollars. Oz Minerals' Carapatina Copper and Gold Mine, 160 k's north of Port Augusta, is nearing completion, with the state soon to reap the benefits. In its quarterly update released last week, the company says the project is running at peak construction. Energy connections are up and running with the completion of a substation at Mount Gunston. Other vital infrastructure is either completed or in the final stages of being finished. If all goes to plan, the first concentrate will be produced as early as the final three months of this year. Local MP Eddie Hughes says the mine is a big deal for the region and the state generate jobs for our region um, and well-paying jobs for our region. So it's uh, very uh, positive news. And Mr Hughes says the benefits should spread to local contractors in the Upper Spencer Gulf, with Oz keen on drilling into the region's expertise. I'm confident that it will use a, a lot of, uh, of locals and, and they'll try and maximise uh, local employment. So by the end of the year, the mine should be ready to go online. Joining its sister Prominent Hill as one of the state's big exporters. Further updates are expected over the next two to three months. The Minister for Veterans Affairs, Darren Chester, has spent the day visiting towns across the Spencer Gulf in a bid to improve services, mental health, medical access and improving support in rural and regional areas, all hot topics on his agenda. There was no holding back at the roundtable discussion on how to improve support and services for our country's veterans. Learn directly from veterans impacted about uh, are our services hitting the mark? Uh, are we doing the right thing by our veterans' families? And is there more we can do as a government and a community? Minister for Veterans Affairs Darren Chester was at the Port Lincoln RSL asking local veterans those very questions. It gives the Minister a good insight into the issues for, for our veterans and uh, today we had a good situation where our guys spoke, they were quite open and the Minister was quite open in his returns. The government spends about $11 billion a year in supporting our service men and women. But today the minister admitted veterans had been failed by the successive governments and it's time to fix that. If there's ways we can use our money more wisely, we should be looking at it. And that's the whole point of being here with Rowan Ramsey. The biggest issue was around access to mental health and medical services. Hearing from veterans about their need to access mental health services, unfortunately it doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me because we do have a lack of specialist services in many of our rural and regional areas. As well as a lack of traceability for veterans post-service. There are veterans that have served over the past 50 years who have gone on their lives and have not reached out to DVA in any way and not accessed services. Today the Minister also met with veterans in Port Augusta and Moonta. Casey Trelaw, 7 Spencer Golf News. Still to come tonight, we have all the action from the Tunarama Ambassador Contest and a local legend named Broken Hills Citizen of the Year. Welcome back. The Tunarama Festival crowned the 2019 Ambassador at the Gala Quest Awards over the weekend. This year's winner was the second male to ever win the coveted title throughout the Quest's history. There was plenty of hot competition for the seven entrants vying for the title of the 2019 Tunarama Ambassador. I am so proud of all of them. They are very, they've represented their community well. Over the last three months, the entrants worked hard to raise funds for their chosen charities. They have actually raised collectively over $98,000. This is money injected into those charities that they wouldn't have had if um, the Quest wasn't in existence. In a new public format on the Tunarama main stage on Friday night, each entrant gave their final speech. Taking home two prizes was Holly Elise Purvin, winning the People's Choice and Highest Fundraiser Awards. Miss Purvin giving praise to the whole experience. If you want to go out for Ambassador, go ahead, do it. It's a lot of fun, you make new friends and you learn so much new qualities about yourself. The crowning of this year's new Ambassador went to the second ever male to win the quest in its almost 60-year history. Damien Burner. 
It was Damien's hard work and dedication to supporting his chosen charity, Community House, that earned him the crown. It gives me a lot of pride. I'm, I'm really, really proud to be the second male to only ever win Ambassador. And it's, it's a thing that my name will be in the history books in the years to come. Casey Trelaw, 7 Spencer Golf News. CSA is expecting the return of its Wallaroo to Lucky Bay ferry service in the coming months. The ferry, which connects the Eyre and York Peninsulas, has been out of operation since 2017. It's been postponed a number of times due to works on the Lucky Bay shallow harbour port. CSA has until June to return its operations or risk the Copper Coast Council ending the company's lease because of a clause in its contract. Both parties are confident operations will return on time. Sailing on the ferry is a two-hour journey which can cut off lots of time for commuters wanting to travel to the other side of the Spencer Gulf. Regional festivals and events can now apply for a state government grant. The Community Events Development Fund is open for another year for events after September 1, 2019. Port Lincoln's Trunarama Festival has previously secured cash from the fund. The grants support marketing, publicity and any other activities which can draw people to events. For more details, head to the Tourism South Australia website. Applications close on March 15. One of Broken Hill's most prominent residents has been honoured at the city's Australia Day ceremony. John Wren's tireless work at the Silver City Cinema and his strong support for the region's film industry saw him named Citizen of the Year. You'd be forgiven for thinking nothing would surprise John Wren. Having operated the Silver City Cinema for over 20 years, many would believe it'd be hard to catch him surprised. But that's what happened on Australia Day when he was named Broken Hills Citizen of the Year. Well, I was astounded. Um, I was astounded. His work at the Silver City Cinema is something to marvel. Once a fortnight for two decades, he's hosted fundraisers for dozens of different community groups. The Citizenship Award worn like a badge of honour. I'm so honoured, I reckon it was like me attending the Academy Awards. I, I got my Oscar for what I feel a job well done. Joining John among the winners were Zali Finch, Pamela Clark, Tony Hiscox and Hannah and Stacey Evers, who were absent on the day. The city's mayor said the ceremony highlighted just how strong the Broken Hill community is. As for John, it was business as usual today. I'm pretty fortunate my, my family is supporting me. I'm pretty fortunate my family, when I'm ready to drop off the planet, they're ready to run the theatre and keep it going for another 20, 30 or 40 years. Patrick Reinke, 7 Spencer Gulf News. Meanwhile, in Port Augusta, volunteers have spoken of their honour after receiving coveted Australia Day awards. The weekend celebrated a number of winners, including one group which helped organise an event which attracted over 200 people to the town. As tireless volunteers of the community, these two locals certainly don't do it for the recognition. But today they were proudly showing off their newest honours. I'm feeling extremely proud. Just amazing, really. Emily Holden was awarded Citizen of the Year at this weekend's celebrations after her work with the popular inclusive basketball, the special school and the racing club. You know what, it's wonderful recognition for all the things I'm involved with. But she says by far her biggest achievement was helping a team of local volunteers start up the first ever Convoy for Kids. We had over 50 rigs pick up children with disabilities, start here at Gladstone Square and take them for a ride around the streets of Port Augusta. The local Lions Club also received Australia Day honours, awarded Community Event of the Year for their hosting of the District Lions Convention in October. The event returned to town for the first time since the 1980s, with hundreds of South Australian members in attendance. From a community event point of view, it certainly was the biggest uh, event and uh, it went well. Uh, they trade about 250 people visited our town for three days and they exposed them to our Pitchy Ritchie Railway. They actually booked the train and took them for a tour. The Mayor says the Lions Club of 49 volunteers, plus other winners like Young Citizen of the Year Lennox Kennedy, are just some examples of Port Augusta's community spirit put a lot of effort in to do what they do and they, they try to create an atmosphere in our community to make people come and want to see what we've got. Garth Burley, 7 Spencer Golf News. 
Port Perry has officially welcomed a handful of eager new medical students to the Mid-North. Taking part in the Rural Medical Placement Program, it's hoped they will decide to stay on to quench the region's doctor drought. With more than 60 GP positions vacant in regional SA, the Rural Medical Placement Program is more important than ever. The small group of excited young medical students will be spending a year training within Port Piri and its surrounding hospitals. I often say this is where you learn all the medicine and of course uh, we know that there is a lot of healthcare need and medicine in uh, rural communities. In Port Piri, a mayoral reception has become a bit of a tradition. The council and local industry leaders are keen to showcase the best of the region, hopefully encouraging some to stay on. I think that we expose ourselves as a regional hospital to every one of these fifth year medical students. There's a chance that we might actually get one or two to stay here. The head of education at the University of Adelaide Rural Clinical School, Dr Laurie MacArthur, has spent a number of years practising medicine in the Clare Valley. Evidence clearly shows that if you are a uh, a doctor in the senior years of your training, um, it influences your future. A number of this year's students were born and raised in the region and are showing signs of wanting to work back home. Long term for me would be to come back and work in a small country town, but I think that everyone that's taken on the rural fifth year program is interested in uh, rural health itself. Dominic Beaton, 7, Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. We'll have the latest fuel price news for the region and tourism in 2030, the focus of a Port Augusta forum. Welcome back. Far North tourism operators say improved roads and infrastructure are needed for visitor numbers to grow in the area. A tourism forum held in Port Augusta today had state tourism officials putting their heads together to plan for the sector's future. With some of the best rural scenery and experiences in Australia, there's no doubt why the tourism of the Flinders and Outback is worth over $430 million annually. But the state tourism body would like to see that number grow even further, today holding a forum to plan for tourism in 2030. What are the points that are really going to grow uh, in terms of the visitor economy? Today's session in Port Augusta is the last of 16 already held across the state. They're hoping to gather data from local tourism operators on the front line about what can be improved over the next 11 years. The investment in marketing, how do we use events to grow a visitation? A recent windfall in regional tourism has seen 2,000 jobs created over the last three and a half years. But operators from the far north say for the industry to keep growing, roads and infrastructure need to be improved. It's all about connectivity and connectivity not just in the digital sense but certainly with, with roads and transport that, that will make differences. Information acquired from these forums will now be made into a report, which the State Tourism Commission says will help form the basis of consultation with all levels of government. What we're trying to do is to bring all of the views and the thoughts together so that the visitor economy is captured strategically. Garth Burley, 7 Spencer Golf News. Time now for Fuel Watch, our look at how petrol prices are stacking up around the regions. Here's Patrick in Broken Hill. <laughs> Well, petrol prices have had an unpredictable week this week. Some are up, some are down and others have broken even. Starting with unleaded, as usual, and Port Lincoln has enjoyed a week of no movement and still averages $1.30. Wyala is the first to see red going up by about three cents. The price now, one thirty-five. Port Augusta has gone down by a little and that's the same story in Broken Hill. Kadena joins Port Augusta on one twenty-nine. Port Perry is one cent cheaper after going up by about a cent. Adelaide is on the downward trend this week. The price there is only $1.21. Turning over to diesel now and it's a bloodbath, red everywhere. Some are not doing as bad as first thought though. Wyala and Port Augusta are both still averaging the same price as last week. Port Lincoln has gone up by about a cent. Port Piri and Kadena have both followed suit. Here in Broken Hill we've also gone up by a cent or so. We're now paying around $1.47. Adelaide has gone up by two. And closing with a quick look at auto gas and there's not really much to talk about. Wyala is the only one to see some green, dropping down by two cents, but it's still the most expensive. Kadena saw some red, but it was only a minor change. The price there now around 84 cents. 
Now remember these prices are the regional averages and they do not reflect any one particular outlet. And if you do find a spot that does sell unleaded or diesel or auto gas for cheaper, be sure to let us know on our Facebook page. Stay with us after the break, we'll have all the latest on the weather front. Welcome back. Now time to take a look at what's happening in the weather. Here's Britt Aylin. Thanks Louise. Well temperatures have jumped again for a hot and windy day across the Gulf. Port Augusta with a top of 42 today, Wayala 41, Port Lincoln 34, Broken Hill 39 and Port Pirie 41. From the satellite we can see a trough of low pressure moving over the Gulf today. Tomorrow a high pressure system will move south of the Bight and continue eastwards into Friday. Along the coast, we'll find south to southwesterly winds at 20 to 25 knots and swells to 2.5 metres. The sun will rise at 6.41 in the morning, with sunset due at 8.24. Tomorrow, maximums 2 to 3 degrees below average, with partly cloudy conditions. Port Augusta with a top of 30, Wayala 26, Port Lincoln 23, Coffin Bay and Cleve both 22, dry and dusty in Broken Hill 33 degrees, Port Piri 29. And moving on to the weekend, another hot and sunny Saturday ahead, 31 the top for Port Lincoln to kick off the weekend. Cleve 27 on Friday with the maximum jumping another 10 degrees to 37 on Saturday. Woodna ending the week on a fine and sunny note, 35 on Friday, 41 on Saturday. Wyala warming up Friday and Saturday, a windy Sunday ahead. Port Augusta sunny and 36 on Friday, 41 the max on Saturday. Kadena fine and mostly sunny through the end of the week. A sunny day at Port Piri on Friday, sunny again with a top of 38 on Saturday. Similar conditions for Clare, 30 on Friday, 37 on Saturday. And nice and sunny in Broken Hill, 33 on Friday and a top of 39 on Saturday. And Louise, that's all for today's weather. Thanks for that, Briss. That's your local news this Wednesday evening. We will have more updates later. But until then, good night.